Hello guys, I'm back. My name is Jefferson Costa. I'm a chemical process engineer with expertise in plant design. And today we'll talk about compressors. What they are, uh, what is the role of the chemical process engineer when we are talking about compressor design is we do, uh, we do design, we do selection, we do sizing. So it will the kind of subjects that I will cover with you here today. And if you don't know me yet, my name is, uh, I am a chemical process engineer since 2007, and I share my experience and expertise in plant design with people in order that the chemical process engineer must, uh, are able to know what he or she must know to work with plant design. So the main, the main goal of this YouTube channel is to let you know what is necessary, what are needed to you work with plant design. And the subject, I got this subject today because I am doing a special classes, I recording today a special class to my in-process booster training program. And I will talk about the surge analysis in Aspen High C. So I got this opportunity to, to get the, the PowerPoint and share with you some information related to that. But it is not a class of the in-process booster, okay? It's only extraction. And it's very nice to know where are you from, and I can see that John Spinoza is already here. So nice to have you from Dubai, Spinoza. Thanks a lot for being here with me. And I am a chemical process engineer from Brazil. And uh, uh, just only one last advice or a last tip is, Join my process booster because you will be aware of my contents, new contents, and also uh, every time that I do a live session, uh, that will be available. Uh, the link will be available to you in the in process boost in the in process Telegram channel. Sorry, and this is it. And if I have any other uh, comments or advice during the the presentation, I let you know. So let me be a little bit smaller right now. Ah, it is always very important to me to know where, where are you from. So uh, if you have any questions, you can use the, the chat to let your question available. And in the end of this presentation, I will read all the questions and comments that are available. And also will be very, very nice to me to know where are you from because with the internet I can I can spread my message much far away and it's very nice to uh, now we have Spinozas from Dubai but where are you from tell me because it's very nice and it uh, push me to keeping sharing my expertise so as I told you Today, I will be doing a recording to my in process booster telegram Sorry, I will be doing a recording for my training program to talk about the to talk about search analysis, but we can use this presentation to do this live session and share with you a little bit about compressors and what are the roles and what the, you what the companies expect from you when you are working as a chemical process engineer plant design. So uh, we'll talk about a, bit, a little bit about the compressor application, compressor curve, surge, stony wall, and surge control. So to start with, and the example is only for, for the training program. So to start with, when we talking about compressors, it is very, very similar to pumps, so, but only uh, instead of compressing liquids, we need to compress gas. So the, the objective, the main objective of the compressors is compress a gas from a lower pressure to a higher pressure. And depending on the, the amount of pressure that you must build in your process, you have different kinds of compressors available in the market. So here you can see two charts and the, the, it is available, the first one in the compressor selection and sizing from Royce, and the second one is available in the centrifugal and axial compressor control uh, 
from Gregory. Both are books available in the Amazon or in the internet. You can look for that. And what I want to show you is that we have two kinds of compressors, mainly two kinds. The volumetric compressors and we have also the dynamic compressors. The differences between them is that the, comp the dynamic compressor will use the velocity of the fluid to build pressure, while the volumetric compressor has a, a, a constant volume and the, the compression in the, in the gas is, is responsible for bu building the pressure. So the change in the volume in the, in the, the, in the volumetric compressor builds the pressure in the system. And we have from one stage of compress compression up to multiple stages of compression depending on the, on the discharge pressure that you need in your process. So as you know, as chemical process engineers, we must solve problems and one problem uh, related to compressors is that we have a stream at a low pressure and we need to to, to increase the pressure to have a better efficiency, to comply with the customer requirements, uh, to be able to, to, to suppress the pressure drop and etc. So for instance, I work in an energy company and today I'm dealing a lot with biomethane process. So I need to, to evaluate, I need to propose upgrading in, the, in this kind of plant. And we have uh, a source of gas that is available in the land field, so it is around the um, ambient pressure and it is sea level and uh, it is far away from our processing plant. It's around 2,000, 2000 meters or two kilometers away from the, the process, the, the plant. And to be able to get the the, the gas from the land field, I, need, I have a blower at my, the battery limit of my plant, so I do a negative suction pressure in the system in order that I can get the gas to my, to my site. But to, and the biogas bio is mainly the methane and CO2, and to sell this for the market, I need to remove the CO2. But the, the, dif the difference between a blower and the compressor is the, the building pressure. So a blower, you have a limited increase in pressure. It can be around 0 to, to up to one bar differences, while in compressors, you use more pressure rate. So you have a, a higher pressure rate. You can, it, it can be 2, 2.1, 3, depending on the supplier. So First, I have a blower that is a kind of compressor and you can simulate that in the Iceman High Seas or in UNIC and other process simulation software. And I need to build the pressure to, and I send this gas to a compressor because to remove the CO2, I need a pressure around 30 bar G. So I get from 100 millibar G in the suction of the compressor to 30 bar G uh, in order and to do that, I cannot do that in just one stage because the limitations uh, relate to temperature and the integrity of the material. So I have a three-stage compressor, compressor to do the, the, this, this service. And in this case, I use a volumetric compressor because it fits better for the system. So according to the chart, depending on the flow and depending on the pressure rate you need, you, you can do or you can evaluate a pre-selection of which kind of compressor best fits to your process. So if we are talking about uh, 10, 100,000 100, CFM and a pressure rate between 2 and 15, for instance, we, the best, what best fits for the, your process is uh, a, a actual compressor and why it is important to you know this kind of information it's important because when we do the pro the process simulation what really matters for for the design of the plant 
is not the process simulation in itself. It, it is the results that we extract from that. And we need to fill a uh, uh, process data sheet in order that the equipment engineer will get the, those information and convert that to a specification. And when the, if you are in a mid, uh, medium to a small company, eventually you will not have a mechanical engineer or equipment engineer to do that, and you will be responsible for doing the specification of the equipment. And with the specification of the equipment, you will need to do the quotations with the suppliers because we don't design the, the compressor. Uh, like pumps, we select the best compressor to our process. And if you know that the extra, actual compressor is what best fits to your process, you will avoid co doing quotation or uh, waiting for answers from suppliers that do not supply, that do, do not offer much uh, actual, uh, actual compressors. So that's why it's very, very interesting that you get familiar with that. You don't need to memorize this, it, but it's interesting to you know this because if you are talking about uh, a process that is uh, from 1000 to 100 to 1000 CFM and you have a pressure rate, for instance, of uh, 100, 100 uh, pressure rate. So, Multi-stage reciprocating compressor must be uh, must fit better for this, so you will avoid of wasting time with suppliers that do not offer this kind of technology. And what is the pressure rate? The pressure rate is the difference between the discharge pressure in the absolute uh, measurement the, divided with the for the suction pressure at absolute measurement. So this is the overall pressure rate. But we have the intermediate pressure rate that is the pressure rate of the each stage of compression of your system. So a uh, whole, uh, whole of pump is to get the, the, the discharge pressure divided to the inlet pressure and get the root of the numbers of the stage, you will have the pressure rate for each stage of compression, but you must confirm that with the supplier information because not, uh, not always the, the stage have, uh, has the same kind of pressure rate, okay? So here we have uh, the, in the second chart, we have the relationship between the, the flow and remember that it is the inlet flow and in many times the, the suppliers uh, uses as reference the actual flow. And that is very important because although the, 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 the mass flow is the same, the, flow, the volumetric flow will vary depending on the pressure and depending on the temperature. So, uh, be aware about about that when you uh, evaluate a uh, uh, curve, uh, uh, compressor curve, and we'll talk a little bit about that also. So, uh, and here is the flow and the discharge pressure. So, here is the discharge pressure. So, this is some of the reference that I recommend you to take a look about when you are, you are uh, learning about compressors, okay? So, Another thing is that because of these differences in the in the the functioning, the centrifugal or the dynamic compressor has uh, different concepts. There there are different the different um, uh, working process than a volumetric compressor. The curve of the C, the, the the machines the equipment are different. So you can see here that we have the percentage of flow and we have the percentage pressure rate or head. Let's, let's consider it as the head. And the head is the, the pressure rate converted to, to length, okay? In, in, in general, okay? I, I'm not uh, here in the, in 
this channel, I am not worried too much about the calculations. Here, the important thing is that you understand you what you must know to work with plan design. So, when we are talking about positive displacement compressor, that is a type of volumetric compressor, you can see that if we restrict the, the flow just a little bit, the head increases a lot. And you can imagine you can imagine this way, uh, you have your compressor uh, delivering the, the flow to the system, the volumetric compressor, and we have a regulating valve at the discharge of the compressor. If we, we turn off or uh, turn to close just a little bit for volumetric compressor, the pressure at the discharge of the equipment will increase very, very high because the volume that is displaced by the, the equipment is constant. And because of that, when we do the restriction, the, the, the flow that is suctionated, suctionated will keep the same, but the restriction will be higher. And because of that, we can uh, achieve the maximum allowable working pressure of the system very, very, very fast. On the other hand, when we're talking about dynamic compressors, and here we have an example of a centrifugal, this line here, and we have an example of an axial, that is this line here. When we do the restriction at the discharge of the compressor, the increasing in the head is uh, lower, and we have a more, more range for, for the flow, so we can uh, reduce the flow more than we are talking about reciprocating compressors. This, what, why this is important? This is important because for uh, dynamic compressors, we need to, to worry about the surge line and about the uh, stone wall line. So, what is the surge line? When we do uh, too much restriction to a process in a compressor, a dynamic compressor, or if we decrease the flow of the system through the compressor, uh, the curve where, let's imagine that we, it is our operating curve. The curve will dislocate it to the left side of the, the chart. So it means that it will reach a region where the vibration and the performance of the compressor or of the equipment is not the ideal. And because of this kind of issue, you can you can have the the you can break the plate the the blades. You can uh, because of the vibration. Uh, uh, have some kind of issue with the engines and etc. So you don't want to work or uh, to reach this line here in the in the equipment during the, the operations or yeah, in during the operations. On the other hand, uh, when we are talking about compressors, you must have uh, 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 resistance of the systems. Uh, matching what are expected in terms of the compressor operations. Because if you don't have a restriction, the compressor can go to the other side of the, the chart, that is the choke line or the stone wall conditions. And it means that the compressor is delivering too much more flow than what it, uh, that it was designed. And because of that, you will also have uh, vibration and it can lead to the, the the failure of the equipment. So we want to avoid at any cost the reaching the shock line or stone wall line and also the surge line. And to do that we have some kinds of uh, control to, to avoid this kind of situation. So uh, I, uh, so talking about the surge control and what is the surge control? When we are going to the, the surge line, it means that we have less flow in the, the compressor that it should be. So to avoid this, 
you need to have a way to, to add more flow to the equipment. And, and based on that, we'll do the, the, the control philosophy for this situation. So here, you can see that we have a representation of a centrifugal compressor, and in this case, it can be a turbine that gives the, the driving force, or it can be electrical motor, no problem. But what I want to show you is that we have our source of uh, we have our source of uh, gas to the compressor, and we have the discharge of the the system of the equipment. If we close or decrease the opening of the discharge valve, or if the pressure resistance in the process increases, the 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 compressor will dislocate the curve to the left side, so we will reach the surge region. And to avoid that, to keep the minimum acceptable flow at the compressor, what you must do is have a recirculation line, uh, if it, and it can be a recirculation line. If we are talking about hydrocarbons, for instance, because you don't, don't want to, to burn it in the flare if you don't need to and you, you cannot deliver that to atmosphere because we are talking about hydrocarbons but if it is for instance a nitrogen compressor uh, or a oxygen compressor or air compressor instead of having the recirculation for surge control we can have for instance only the, the, the vent okay so this is to guarantee that although the system is not requiring the, the enough flow for the compressor functioning, we will guarantee uh, by the sur anti surge valve that it, the minimum flow is, is get by the, the equipment. And the same if we, for instance, if I have an air separation unit here and there is a shutdown, this valve can close to, to, to keep the safety of the system upstream of the compressor and we will not have more enough flow to, to, to deliver to the system so this one can close but depending on the arrangement, depending on the control we can keep running the compressor at some time uh, until it shuts down uh, smoothly or uh, depending on the case uh, it, sometimes Depending on the kind of equipment, it can take uh, too much time to restart or not. So you can keep in this uh, uh, circulating the flow in order that you don't reach the uh, the surge line conditions. But the, there is a time response to do that. And depending on the the how how big is your compressor. Uh, uh, eventually the anti-surge valve is not enough. You can deliver uh, a much uh, uh, a speed or a faster response to your system. So in this kind of case you can have, you can consider it the hot gas valve and what it will do, what it will do is guarantee that the, the surge conditions has a faster response to be to be avoided. So this hot gas valve will not have the same size of the anti-surge anti because it is only to, to boost your, your surge control. Okay, and a hull of thumb is that the hot gas valve is 50% of the design flow, but it is possible to use the high spin high seas to evaluate it and it is what I will record to my, to my students today, the, how they can evaluate it and uh, do the specification of this kind of valve to, to add to the, the plan design. So uh, here we, okay, I will not cover the examples. So now what I would like to share with you is that uh, here,
So what I will share, what I will cover with you right now is information related to the pipe instrumentation diagram. That is very, very important. And let's see the differences that we may have from the positive displacement compressor and also the volumetric. So, <clears throat> we, a, as the rules of the chemical process engineer, we, what we do, we, we have the, the problem to, to solve, so we need to build pressure to a gas system, and we will do the heating material balance related to that. So, we will add uh, a compressor in our process simulation, and we evaluate, we, we evaluate, uh, what is the hot gas, uh, what is the, the discharge requirements, we have the, the inlet conditions, and based on that, we do the sizing of the, bre uh, uh, the brake, oh, I forgot in English, I just forgot in English. Brake power. We do the brake power calculation in the process simulation, and with that we can do a, a pre-selection or pre-sizing of the motor of the compressor if it is an electrical motor. And with the results of the process simulation, as I told you, we need to have a specification data sheet in order to buy or to the, do the quotation of the compressor. And once we do, we deliver that to the suppliers, available suppliers that offers the kind of compressor that we need to, we will receive documentations. And one of the documentation is the curve of the, the compressor and also the PNID. And sometimes we don't receive the PNID during the quotation, but when we buy the equipment, we must uh, we receive that. So what I would like to show you here is that uh, as different companies, uh, what I mean, the compressor supplier will have its own kind of standard to do the, the size, to do the, the drawing. So in this case, you can see that I have, <coughs> sorry, a compressor here, and there is an inlet guide vein that is associated with the first stage of compression. I have a cooling system. I have the second stage of compression and the after cooler in order to deliver the gas to the system. So the battery limit of the supplier, you can see that from this point, compressor package limit. So it's, it starts here in 10 inches flanged inlet and it finish here in the Vitalik connections by user, so by, by the buyer and he, what is inside these two lines, it is uh, supplied for the, the manufacturer. So I have the uh, temperature transmitters, I have pressure transmitters, I have already the, the, the purge system. And what is interesting, interesting here is that the cooling, cooling media goes to the tube side and at the heat exchanger at the shell side of the heat exchanger, we have the gas and what condensates in, inside here, it's purged with this uh, device. And the compressor is not only the blades, it's not only the pipings, we have also the other system, subsystems inside the, the compressor. And as it gets bigger, more complex is the system. So we have the oil cooler because the, we must uh, cool down the, the, the driver, we must cool down the, the oil that recirculates inside the, the drive of the equipment to not overheat that. So we, the pipe instrumentation diagram must also show this kind of uh, devices because we have here oil pumps, we have check valves, we have strainers and we must evaluate uh, uh, from time to time in the field the, the differential pressure in the strainer to verify if it's 
lock it, uh, block it or not. And there are many information here, including the safety valve that are in this system. But when we, it is the, the drawing of the manufacturing. But when we buy the equipment, we, in many cases, our company already have its own kind of standards for drawing. So this drawing here can turn something like this one when you shift from the compressor, uh, from the supplier drawings to the uh, customer drawings. So in this case, it is the same compressor, but now we have the standard from the, the customer. So here you can see that it is a, a air compressor and we have the, the battery limit here, 10 inches, but I have a suction filter because I'm getting a, a fluid of air as my fluid and I have the system, the cool down system or the cooling system and I have the, the temperature, pressure and etc. And although the supplier don't deliver to us a mean of avoiding the surging, the surging conditions, I must consider that in my design. So it was not shown here in this, peak, in this drawing, but in the other sheet I have a vent valve in order that if my compressor, my, my code box or my system downstream of the compressor is not uh, requiring flow, it will uh, decrease the flow in my equipment and to avoid the surge conditions, I have the vent valve. And in this case, as I'm talking about air, I can discharge that to a atmosphere. And uh, uh, it would be possible to add this vent valve to the to this to this drawing, and it is a matter of the the who is uh, drawing the 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 sheet okay it could be smaller and in my point of view it could be better to have here so you have all the control of the the equipment in just one sheet but it is just uh, a matter of preference of who is doing or the standards of the your company and here you uh, uh, a simplified way to know that it is a centrifugal compressor is the represent, uh, representation of the equipment. So most often, and you must confirm that in the symbol chart of your, of your plan design, it, this is the representation of the centrifugal uh, equipment or centrifugal compressor. When we are talking about volumetric compressor, the things change a little bit. So here I have another compressor and this time it is a nitrogen compressor. So the vent line is already in the same sheet of the compressor. And this kind of representation usually uh, indicates to you that it is a positive displacement or a volumetric compressor. So this way you don't have a surge, uh, surge, uh, surge curve. To, to evaluate, but as the to but to the equipment to work well, we must consider the minimum pressure and also the maximum pressure at the inlet of the equipment. So that's why one of the reasons that we have a recirculation valve also. And you can see that it's a PV, and the PV is associated one P I epsilon because we have a overhide selection here uh, it can be this recirculation valve can be controlled by the suction uh, the the present value of the suction of the equipment it can be defined by a hand uh, typing a hand definition of the the operator and it can be uh, the defined by the discharge of the equipment and you can see here here mm. yeah. of the discharge of the second stage so we have here the line going to here 
and as I told you, when, once we, we close the discharge of a volumetric compressor, the, the pressure increases too fast, so we have here a pressure safety device to guarantee that we will not uh, surpass the maximum allowable working pressure of the system. And in the centrifugal compressor, if we, we, it is rated uh, According to the, the pipelines, according to the flanges of the system, usually we don't have the pressure safety device because it will reach a maximum head and that head, if it's lower than the maximum allowable working pressure of the system, you don't need to protect the system from overpressure. So you don't have, uh, in this case here, we don't have a PSV. So this is, is very important to you identify that any time that you install a volumetric compressor in your system, you must have a pressure relief device at the discharge of your stage. So here you can see that at the discharge of the first stage, there is a PSV. At the discharge of the second stage, there is another PSV. And at the discharge of the third stage, there, are, there is another PSV. So uh, when we deal with plane design, we chemical process engineers deals with plane design. We are not only interested in the process in itself, but also in the safety of the process. So that is very, very important. And when, as we are talking about chemical process engineering plane design, of course, that I must share with you some kind of re related to simulation. So I have it here also uh, how it looks like this system here, the, the, the centrifugal compressor, and you can see this two-stage compressor. Um, just a moment. How it looks like, and in this case, I'm, I'm using the units in design, but uh, the members of my training program will find how to do that in ice high seas. So what we just saw in the drawing, the PNID drawing, we have a representation of that here in the process simulation. So I have the first stage and here, interesting that you must know how to convert the formation that you get from real life to process simulation. In the, in the drawing, in the design, um, here in the design of this equipment let me use this one to make it clear you can see that the gas goes through the shell side and we have the the tube side with the media the cooling media and because of that there is the condensation because the air is with uh, moisture, there is content of water, and when we compress that and we decrease the temperature, the water will condensate. And we have here a, a drain valve, automatic drain valve, that time to time, or uh, this way I think it's time to time, will drain the system to, to avoid the, the filling with water. And there is no vessel separator here because the shell side of the heat exchanger works as a vessel separator. But we don't have this kind of configuration in the process simulation. We need to adapt that, adapt, do a, some adaptation in the process simulation to reflect the, the, what's in, in real, what's installed in the field. So to do that, what was done here was added a uh, a heat exchanger because we we are interested in evaluating which is the amount of the cooling water that are needed to do the, the cooling of the system and it was added a vessel separator that in this case in this specific case this one the heat exchanger and the vessel separator in the field is the same so sometimes we will do things in your process simulation that will represent the real life, but it will not be a picture of the real life. And that's very, very important, and that's why you, 
you in that's why the process simulation is not your process flow diagram because when you draw this in a process flow diagram you will uh, do as the pipe instrumentation diagram okay so this is just an observation don't think that your process simulation is the process flow diagram of your plan design the process flow diagram of the plan design is a specific drawing that that must be drawn based on the the conditions that will be installed in the field and it is something between your process simulation heat material balance in, in a process simulation software and the pipe instrumentation diagram so this is the the goal or this is the role of a process uh, flow diagram and here with uh, uh, just i told you the eventually the pressure rate will not be the same so you can see here that i have 2.1 uh, but uh, one bar pressure ratio to the first stage and the second stage i have 3.4 and this this is the process simulation based on the information of the supplier and i have also another document that is very important that it is the compressor curve so this is the kind of uh, activities this is the kind of uh, the activities roles that you must be familiar when we are talking about chemical process engineering plan design related to compressors so you will do your process simulation and you do some assumptions related to the pressure ratio and efficiency and etc the, re the the result of it will be a, a specification for equipment a compressor you will send the, the this specification for a quotation you will receive a quotation with some information related to the supplier including the curve of performance of the equipment some drawings and depending on the stage of the quotation you can receive the piping and instrument piping instrumentation diagram of the supplier or not but for sure you will receive the curve of uh, performance of the equipment in order to evaluate if it fits to your process or not and you can see here in this curve the the lines are based not in the in the rotation of the equipment but in the guide vane uh, about the guide vane so in this in the centrifugal compressor there is a guide vane that's something uh, some sets of blades that opens more or open le less to to let the the flow inside the centrifugal compressor and as it is more close so is 60 percent uh, closed it means that we have uh, 40 percent open the the curve will dislocate to the left side because we are decreasing the amount of flow through the compressor and here we can we are it is possible to build our surge line and also our stone wall line because these points here is the limit the limitation of our, our surge line so it's our references and these points here are the references for the stone wall lines so you can see that in the in the many in some books or in some in some training we receive a table with all the the points for stone wall and also all the points for the surge curve but in practice what you do in most cases is a uh, uh, handwork to uh, to relate do a relationship between these points in the flow and also the efficiency the efficiency is not in the in this chart although with the required break uh, break power you can do the calculation of efficiency for preliminary results so you will in some cases uh, get do a vertical line and we will see for this point here like we have here for this point here what will be the break the break uh, power 
and with that you will do all the preliminary calculations, develop the preliminary drawings, specification, and etc. as a chemical process engineer. So this class was to give you an overview of what we do in real life as a chemical process engineers. If you have any questions, please let me know in the chat. Uh, there is a lag. Uh, uh, it there is sometimes between what you will write and what I can see in my screen. So right now I will see the comments from the beginning of our class. And if there is any question, I will close this this one because I have a lot of uh, classes to record to my training program. Okay. So I already talked to Spinoza. Nice to have you here, Spinoza. And there is a name in in Arabic. Sorry, I don't know how to read Arabic yet. Hi Jefferson, nice to see you again. I am playing design from Algeria and I hope to work as a process engineer in PC company. Thank you for so for sharing your knowledge with us. It is very helpful. Thanks a lot. And every Saturday. Uh, there is a new video available to you here in my YouTube channel. This is my commitment. So if it's not a live, uh, a live session, uh, at least I will do my best to have a recorded session for you. Okay, so this is my commitment. If you want to be notified about it, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and click in the bell. Or you can also or do the both subscribe to, to join my Telegram channel in process and the link is to join is the in the description of this video. Akshay, very nice to have you here. Again, Akshay, Akshay is from India. I'm doing fine. And Hansan, what's the software? Uh, Hans, Hansan, Hansa, I use... Uh, okay, for the pipe instrumentation diagram, what I use in here is the AutoCAD. So you, so this is the AutoCAD 2016. For the process simulation that I show you is the Unison design, but the Unison design is very, very similar to Aspen High Seas. You can use it uh, also. And I use it also the, the, the PDF. So guys, this is it. I hope you like it and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye bye.